Hey everybody, this is uh, Sweet Stuff Saturday. We're just going to talk about something that's happening right now in the knife world, and that is the uh, abandonment of mid-priced or high-priced overseas-made knives. Uh, I noticed, I did not go to Blade Show, it is again on my son's birthday, but I noticed that there was a really, really, really tough market for... Uh, especially the self-published overseas-made knives. Um, Brian Nadeau, who I think is one of the very best knife designers working today, was unable to launch a mid-ranged uh, line of overseas-made knives because there just wasn't the interest there. And I think that this is part of a contraction that, quite frankly, has been coming for a while in the, in the knife world. There are just too many knives out there. And so... What I have on the table are knives, two of them which are overseas made, one of them which is the United States made. Uh, the Sebenza is always going to be a good knife. It's always going to sell well because it's just a really solid blade. Don't you agree, Gary Grimo? Yes. Do you like the Sebenza? Yes. Do you think it's worth $425? No. Okay. How much, well, would, yeah, how much would you How much would pay for it? I think it's worth $425, but like some people like, like, go like, it should be way more... A new knife should be worth $50,000. And the knife that are worth $50,000 are not nice knives. What? They're just pieces of art. That's true. So like the uh, the Fire and Ice, the Gem of the Orient, and the King Tut Dagger. I actually like them. They look nice. But like I don't like, like the man jewelry knives. Those look oh, nice. I'm right there with you. I don't like the man jewelry knives either. If you gave me the King Tut Dagger, I would not say no. Obviously. I wouldn't use it as a knife, but yeah. the King Tut Dagger is... Beautiful. Yeah, sold for... I think it sold for $7 million. I don't think it's worth $7 million. Well, I mean, you got to remember, Buster Wawenski put a lot of gold on that thing and a lot of gems. I bet the gold and gems alone are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but then... Then the rest of it is his artistry that made it work. What about the... What about the uh, the fire and ice, the one with the ruby and the sapphire in it. Do you remember that one? Like Did you like that one better? Um, I like the sapphire one. I also like the emerald one. Oh, the gem of the orient. Yeah. Or, yeah, those are all beautiful knives. So, unless we're talking about those knives, you don't think any knife is worth $50,000 or more? Yeah. What about like one of those really nice Jim Cramer kitchen knives? I think those are worth them, but like... Like the scam Spyderco knives are like we make super nice knives. Like the Delica. No, not the Delica. Like the scam kitchen knives. They're scamming off of Spyderco. Oh, like, like the ones on, uh, like the the ones that you see on like YouTube Shorts. Those the, ones are gobble. The ones that are made out of literal tin metal. Like, yeah, pot tin. Yeah, no, no, no. Right, right. And they have a big hole in it. Those things are ugly. All right, so let's talk about these knives. Why is the overseas market cratering? So I have a couple ideas, and I'm not I'm not sure, but here's my guess. Number one, uh, there is an absolute flood of stuff. Like if you followed the pyrite at all, you will know that there are like 30 different versions of the pyrite. And I love the pyrite. This is the mini pyrite by CJRB, by the way. This is a really good little pocket knife. Uh, if you're looking for an entry-level knife, you are going to be very hard-pressed to do better than this. No blade play, button lock. As you can see, you can flick it open. It works really well. It has the very controversially named uh, R AR RPM Steel RPM 9, which uh, they have retracted and now do not claim that it is a uh, powder metal steel. But there are just too many versions of this knife. There are so many different versions out there. And at some point, when you have 30 different versions, it's hard to tell people that the knife is really rare, exotic, or interesting because there are 30 different versions and there are a thousand of each of those. And it's just like, it's overwhelming. This also points out the other problem that I think that they're suffering from. There was a general perception when the Chinese knives started being made originally that they were somehow knockoffs or ripoffs. And the 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 mistake that, that CJRB made with the AR RPM9, and you can look at the Laren Thomas uh, article on this to figure out what I'm talking about. They basically claimed it was a powder metal steel and Laren very quickly determined that it was not a powder metal steel. 
that kind of thing happening really does call into question or call into doubt all of the overseas knives. I'm not saying that's fair, but that's sort of, you know, like the worst case scenario, what people say about them. And to have it come true, at least in one high profile instance, uh, sort of feeds the fire. I don't think it's necessarily fair, but that's the way it works. The other thing that I think is getting kind of tiresome, and the reason why I have this knife out, is because I find it really hard to go out and buy knives over and over again that are on the drop model. Like, you just can't drop that many knives. I mean, you could have a new drop for a new guy who's self-publishing a blade, like, every day if you wanted to, and it's just... It's too many knives, and it's too, not just too many knives, because this is the too many knives representation. It's hard to follow them. And, like, you know, you want a knife, and, like, sure, it's fun if you have to, like, chase it a little bit. But some of these, like, this is the mini synapse. I think he's done, like, two or three drops of these. It's just really hard when everybody is self-publishing a blade, and everybody has, like, three or four versions, and they drop once every two years. Like, it's like, eh, for that much time and energy, I could just go get a custom knife. And, you know, a lot of custom makers are able to deliver stuff in a more consistent fashion. That being said, I still think that there are overseas knives that are going to be worthwhile. And I think that, like, this knife, the, um, the Vero Mini Synapse, is one of them. And the reason why is because it's a very solid design. Uh, I don't think that there needs to be, you know, 30 versions of a knife to make it something that's good. And I think a couple versions, and I think Joseph Vero does a really good job of managing the size of his uh, product line. I think he does a really good job by making sure that each knife has a niche. He basically has a drop point and a worn cliff in each size and then a couple others. And, you know, that's, that's fine. I, he has uh, some that are locking and some that are non-locking. I think that all of those things are a good approach to it, but it just means that there's not like a bazillion entries. I think everybody, everybody in the self-published blade uh, world could stand to release fewer knives or make them more readily available. Um, but I understand that like the way that they work is they place an order. And so they have to, you know, make sure that they have money for that order. And the end result is you sort of preload your purchase with a pre-order I just think that that's too much of a hassle for most people. And if it's between, you know, an overseas made knife that's made twice a year or uh, an American made knife that you can get, you know, pretty easily, I think you, most people are going to choose the American made knife, especially now that some, now Vero is not this issue, but some of the overseas made knives, like the knives from Custom Knife Factory, those knives are uh, more than a Sebenza. So if you could have a Sebenza, with a proven design, you don't have to chase it, and it's going to hold its value. Are you going to get the Sabenz or are you going to get the overseas made knife? And so that's sort of the thing that I think is the third reason why the overseas knives are having a hard time. But that is the end of the discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll read the comments.